Back in Sir Isaac Newton's day, there was a big problem. There was data describing the motion of planets, but no one had been able to figure out the patterns in the data. Newton solved this puzzle. Newton figured out that all bodies attract one another. Here I've sketched body one and body two. And I'm going to draw a straight line between the center of these two bodies. So there's a force on body one. This is the force on body one. And this is due to body two pulling body one towards body two. Similarly, there's a force on body two. And this is the pull of body one on body two. And this force and this force are exactly the same in magnitude. Newton figured out that the magnitude of this force is given by this equation. Force is equal to a constant times the mass of body one, the mass of body two, look at a two, and then divided by the radius squared. To get the radius, let's sketch in the center of mass of body one. and the center of mass of body two. And the radius is the distance from the center of mass of body one to the center of mass of body two. Now this constant, g, has a value of 6.7 times 10 to the minus 11th, so e minus 11. And the units, which you can see from the equation, are newtons, kilogram, kilograms squared in the denominator, so units work out, and then meters squared in the numerator. Let's zoom on that so you can see the whole thing. There is Newton's law of universal gravitation. I'd like to take a minute to connect Newton's law of universal gravitation and critical thinking. I claim that engineers ought to ask why. For example, why should I believe Newton's law of universal gravitation? I'd like to share four reasons for asking why. Number one, any claim can be wrong. Number two, science and engineering is advanced by those people who ask why. Number three, if you dig into the history of Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation, you'll learn a great deal. And my favorite reason, you will learn how to create original work by studying examples of great thinkers. Newton would come to mind here. If you delve into the history of how the law was developed, you'll learn it was developed by inductive reasoning, which in simple terms means to draw a conclusion from many samples. So a simple example of inductive reasoning is this. The sun has risen every day, thus the sun will rise tomorrow. In the example of the law of gravity, Newton saw that the equation fit all known data, and thus he concluded the equation must fit all possible data. And the, this equation has been tested by many scientists since Newton and has generally proved to work out very, very good indeed in engineering. Next, I'd like to do an example. Calculate the gravitational force between a banana and an apple. So according to Newton's law of universal gravitation, there's a force acting on the banana from the apple. Force like that. And similarly, there's a force of the banana pulling on the apple that's equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, and collinear. And our goal is to calculate the magnitude of this force. So I'm going to apply Newton's law of universal gravitation. Here's the equation. The gravitational constant is known. I'm going to estimate that the mass of a banana is about one-third of a pound, which is 450 grams divided by three, or about 150 grams. I'll estimate the mass of the apples, also about 150 grams, and I'll estimate the separation distance is one meter. So now I have all the information I need for my calculation. 
So I've substituted numbers into my equations. Let me check my units. So kilograms squared cancels kilograms squared there. Meters squared there cancels meters squared there. And my answers come out in newtons as I expect. Excellent. Let me do my calculations. So the gravitational force between a banana and an apple is about 1.5 times 10 to the minus 12th newtons. A minuscule, tiny force. Now I've zoomed out so you can see the whole example. And the key idea is the gravitational force between common bodies is typically negligibly small. Now that changes when one of these bodies is the Earth, as we'll see with the next example. The purpose of this example is to calculate the gravitational force between the Earth and an apple. According to Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation, the Earth is pulling on the apple with the forces shown here. In the same way, the apple is pulling on the Earth. This force is shown here. Our goal is the force, which can be represented as a question mark inside a box. Here's Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation. G is a constant, m1 becomes mass of the earth, m2 becomes mass of the apple, and the radius is the radius of the earth, because the distance from the apple to the earth's surface is going to be very small compared to this number. Assume the mass of the apple is 150 grams, then use Google to look up data. We can find the value of the gravitational constant. The mass of the Earth is given here. The radius of the Earth is given here. And now we have all the information we need to plug numbers into this equation. Before doing calculations on this equation, I'm going to rearrange the equation as shown here. And the reason why is that the constant g, the mass of the Earth, and the radius of the Earth are all constants. So I can group these constants together and call this a new constant, which I'll identify with the lowercase letter g. Now I'm ready for calculations. Step one is to calculate the constant g. g was equal to the uh, constant big G times the mass of the Earth, the radius of the Earth squared. So I put numbers in. Kilograms cancels the squared term. The meter squared cancels. The result is 9.798 newtons per kilogram. And if I use the definition of a newton, I can also write this as 9.798 meters per second squared. And the accepted value of this number, if I use more accurate values of the mass of the Earth, the radius of the Earth, etc., is 9.807 meters per second squared. So now I can calculate the gravitational force between the Earth and an apple. Here's the equation I'm going to use. I substitute in numbers and the answer is 1.47 newtons, which is about one-third of a pound force. Now I've zoomed out so you can see the whole calculation. The point of this example is that anytime you do a problem like this, the gravitational force between the Earth and any object, this group of terms right here, let's zoom in on that. This group of terms right here will always end up being a constant. Let me zoom back out so again you can see the whole example. The first main point from this lesson I want to leave you with is that I really recommend that you figure out the physics of all equations, especially scientific laws like Newton's Law of Universal Gravity. And physics is my shorthand way of saying figure out what the equation means, when it applies, the meaning of terms, etc. Why do this? Application of the ideas to design is much easier. Indeed, it's probably impossible to do application unless you understand the physics quite well. The second reason is that learning new topics is much easier because new topics build on existing topics. Newton's law tells us that any two bodies will attract one another. The force acts along a line from the center of mass of body one to the center of mass of body two. 
The force on body one from body two is the same as the force on body two from body one. For common bodies, apples, oranges, airplanes, buildings, the gravitational force between two bodies is negligible. The gravitational force only becomes significant if one of these bodies is a planet, say the Earth or the Moon. Newton's law tells us the magnitude of the gravitational force. It's given by a constant with this value, the mass of body one, the mass of body two, and the distance from the center of masses of the two bodies. That concludes this lesson. Hope you've enjoyed this.